Chapter Seven of Far from the Madding Crowd. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tyg Hines. Far from the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Chapter Seven. Recognition, a timid girl. Bathsheba withdrew into the shade. She scarcely knew whether most to be amused at the singularity of the meeting or to be concerned at its awkwardness. There was room for a little pity also for a very little exultation, the former at his position and the latter at her own. Embarrassed she was not, and she remembered Gabriel's declaration of love to her at Norcombe only to think she had nearly forgotten it. Yes, she murmured, putting on an air of dignity and turning again to him with a little warmth of cheek, I do want a shepherd, but— He's a very man, ma'am, said one of the villagers quietly. Conviction breeds conviction. Ah, that I is— said a second decisively. "'The man truly,' said a third with heartiness. "'He's all there,' said number four, fervently. "'Then will you tell him to speak to the bailiff?' said Bathsheba. All was practical again now. A summer eve and loneliness would have been necessary to give the meeting its proper fullness of romance. The bailiff was pointed out to Gabriel, who, checking the palpitation within his breast at discovering that this Ashtoreth of strange report was only a modification of Venus, the well-known and admired, retired with him to talk over the necessary preliminaries of hiring. The fire before them wasted away. "'Men,' said Bathsheba, "'you shall take a little refreshment after this extra work. Will you come to the house?' "'We could knock in a bit and a drop a good deal freer, miss.' "'If so be you'd send it to Warren's Malthouse,' replied the spokesman. Bathsheba then rode off into the darkness, and the men straggled on to the village in twos and threes, Oak and the bailiff being left by the rick alone. "'And now,' said the bailiff finally, "'all is settled, I think, about your coming, and I'm going home along. Good night to you, shepherd.' "'Can you get me a lodging?' inquired Gabriel. "'That I can't, indeed,' he said moving past Oak as a Christian edges past an offertory plate when he does not mean to contribute. If you follow on the road till you come to Warren's Malt House, where they are all gone to have their snap of victuals, I dare say some of them will tell you of a place. Good night, ye shepherd. The bailiff who showed this nervous dread of loving his neighbour as himself went up the hill and Oak walked on to the village, still astonished at the rencounter with Bathsheba glad of his nearness to her, and perplexed at the rapidity with which the unpractised girl of Norcombe had developed into the supervising and cool woman here. But some women only require an emergency to make them fit for one. Obliged to some extent to forgo dreaming in order to find the way, he reached the churchyard, and passed round it under the wall where several ancient trees grew. There was a wide margin of grass along here, and Gabriel's footsteps were deadened by its softness even at this indurating period of the year. When abreast of a trunk which appeared to be the oldest of the old, he became aware that a figure was standing behind it. Gabriel did not pause in his walk, and in another moment he accidentally kicked a loose stone. The noise was enough to disturb the motionless stranger, who started and assumed a careless position. It was a slim girl, rather thinly clad. "'Good night to you,' said Gabriel heartily. "'Good night.' said the girl to Gabriel. The voice was unexpectedly attractive. It was the low and dulcet note suggestive of romance, common in descriptions and rare in experience. "'I'll thank you to tell me if I'm in the way for Warren's Malthouse,' Gabriel resumed, primarily to gain the information, indirectly to get more of the music. "'Quite right. It's at the bottom of the hill. And do you know—' The girl hesitated and then went on again. Do you know how late they keep open the book's head in?" She seemed to be won by Gabriel's heartiness, as Gabriel had been won by her modulations. "'I don't know where the book's head is, or anything about it. Do you think of going there to-night?" "'Yes.' The woman again paused. There was no necessity for any continuance of speech, and the fact that she did add more seemed to proceed from an unconscious desire to show unconcern by making a remark which is noticeable in the ingenuous when they are acting by stealth. "'You are not a Weatherbury man,' she said timorously. "'I am not. I am the new shepherd, just arrived.' "'Only a shepherd, and you seem almost a farmer by your ways.' 
No, only a shepherd, Gabriel repeated in a dull cadence of finality. His thoughts were directed to the past, his eyes to the feet of the girl, and for the first time he saw lying there a bundle of some sort. She may have perceived the direction of his face, for she said coaxingly, "'You won't say anything in the parish about having seen me here, will you? At least not for a day or two.' "'I won't if you wish me not to,' said Oak. "'Thank you, indeed,' the other replied. "'I am rather poor, and I don't want people to know anything about me.' Then she was silent and shivered. "'You ought to have a cloak on such a cold night,' Gabriel observed. "'I would advise you to get indoors.' "'Oh, no, would you mind going on and leaving me? I thank you much for what you have told me.' "'I will go on,' he said, adding hesitatingly. "'Since you are not very well off, perhaps you would accept this trifle from me. It's only a shilling, but it's all I have to spare.' "'Yes, I will take it,' said the stranger gratefully. She extended her hand, Gabriel his. In feeling for each other's palm in the gloom before the money could be passed, a minute incident occurred which told much. Gabriel's finger alighted on the young woman's wrist. It was beating with a throb of tragic intensity. He had frequently felt the same quick, hard beat in the femoral artery of his lambs when overdriven. It suggested a consumption too great of a vitality which, to judge from her figure and stature, was already too little. "'What is the matter?' "'Nothing.' Ah, but there is. No, 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 let your having seen me be a secret. Very well, I will. Good night again. Good night. The young girl remained motionless by the tree, and Gabriel descended into the village of Weatherbury, or Lower Long Puddle, as it was sometimes called. He fancied that he had felt himself in the penumbra of a very deep sadness when touching that slight and fragile creature. But wisdom lies in moderating mere impressions, and Gabriel endeavoured to think little of this. End of chapter 7